All right, Ceramics One, we are going to start talking about your coil vessel project and starting to actually construct the project at home. So first thing I've got is just a few clay tools. This container here, I just mixed up some slip or that clay glue. You can use a chunk of clay from your little Ziploc baggie, pop it into an old Tupperware container. Again, make sure it's something that your parents are okay with you using and either throwing away when you're done with the unit or you could bring it into the classroom and have your own little personal um, slip container. Some of the other things that I have is just some clay tools here. Um, I grabbed an old kind of fork that I use for the scoring and I use the backside to actually cut into the clay so I get some nice crisp edges that way. Um, this is just an old little jar spatula. It's pretty firm. Again, I picked this up just at the dollar store. So that could work really nice. Um, if you've got a water spray bottle that helps to keep things hydrated. And I am working on top of a plastic mat here. You can use anything you've got handy at home. So if you've got a piece of cardboard and some newspaper, you could do that. If you've got an old plastic placemat that works really, really well and the clay doesn't necessarily stick to the surface. So the clay that I have um, is a little on the dry side. So you'll see that I do have it wrapped up in just a Ziploc baggie. And then I took and wrapped a piece of wet paper towel over my clay. And I'm gonna let that sit onto the clay overnight so that it slowly hydrates and gets that water back in. And then tomorrow I wouldn't have as cracky of clay that I'm working with. Whenever you don't have clay that you need out, it gets closed back up into the Ziploc baggie so no extra air is getting into there. And then I just set that aside. So first thing I would do is take out a chunk of clay for the base of my coil vessel. And I wanna create something about the thickness of my pinky as far as to be able to hold that whole um, coil structure up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use, this is just an old rolling pin, but if you don't have a rolling pin, you could use, I've had students, um, somebody said today to use a piece of chalk. Sometimes that works if it's a small little piece that they're flattening out. Otherwise, a piece of PVC piping might work really well. You could even just kind of squish the clay down by putting a little bit of pressure onto it and then going in and rolling, rolling it out to about the thickness of your pinky. And I'm just kind of rocking this back and forth because I don't have a big chunk out for demo. So I just smooth that on out. Now you can see there's still some cracks and imperfections in here, but it did pop off from that plastic mat pretty easily. So at this point, I'm gonna use something um, like an old spatula, or if you have um, a keychain card from Dunkin' Donuts, really anything you've got handy, you're just gonna take it to the back side of the clay and smoothing out any tool marks so when I go to cut this, I've already got it shaped pretty nice and I don't have any tool marks showing up on it. So that looks pretty good. Now for the shape itself, I recommend either using something like this cover and putting it over the top, tracing around it and cutting it out, kind of like cookie dough would be. Or I think I'm gonna go ahead and use just the cover from my slip container just to get a basic bottom shape. If I can get this off, there we go. All right, so I would just take it over the top and you, like I said, you can kind of push it in almost like a cookie dough cookie cutter and get that basic shape to show up. Here I would go ahead and use like my little mini fork and instead of using the prong side for my slipping and scoring, I'm going to use the back side just to cut out a shape. So I'm just making my initial line and then putting a little bit more pressure down to cut a nice straight edge off. 
And if I do it all at once and just push right through it, sometimes it changes the shape. So just digging into it, scoring a line, and then digging a little bit further and kind of cutting down, you get a nice crisp edge there. So I wanna make it into my shape. You don't have to have a square, depends on your thumbnail design you came up with. A lot of kids are doing kind of this circular shape. So whatever you got handy, then I'm gonna go ahead and tap the base down. It's just to smooth out my sides and just have a nice little square working base that I'm gonna go from. This is just for demo purposes. Yours is gonna be a little bit bigger. The extra bits of dry clay, I'm just popping back into my bag so it can rehydrate till tomorrow. Just use that one to pop this extra piece in. All right, so now this would have to set up into the air for at least 20 minutes just to get firm enough that you're not getting fingerprints on it. So I'm just setting that off to the side here. And now I can start thinking about my coils. Now, if we were at school, we would all be using the extruder, which pushes those coils of clay, it looks like this, through it, and you can get pretty big sizes um, using the extruder. For at home, we are just gonna be hand rolling this out. We shouldn't, we should be back to school on Monday. Um, so we'll be able to get some of the coils done, but not all of it. So we're gonna hand roll out the coils. I would start with just a chunk of clay. Again, mine's a little on the dry side. It's a lot drier than I like to work with, but I'm gonna take a chunk of clay and I'm gonna roll it between my hands and just start getting it into that coily shape. Once it gets too big for my hands, I'm then gonna place it down on the plastic mat. And I just rock my hand back and forth, even smooth pressure. And you'll see that the coil of clay starts getting bigger. In the end, you can go as far as a coil of clay goes, you know, right around the thickness of your pinky, give or take a little bit. Some areas you might want more fine detail, so you're really gonna thin that coil down. And other areas you might want it a little bit thicker. So you end up with a nice long coil of clay. When it gets about this big, so about four inches, then I start just kind of opening my fingers up as I'm rolling, and it stretches that clay out even further. So again, I'm not starting off with a big chunk of clay and I'm just rolling it back and forth. And you can see that it's getting bigger as I'm rolling. If you're rolling and you kind of get this flat tire thumping going on, that means you're putting too much pressure in one spot at a time. And you might just have to lessen the pressure that you're putting over the top. So as you're stretching this, You'll see that there's not any cracking going on and I'm getting a pretty even thickness all the way through. So this could be a nice chunk for my piece. And I would just wanna measure it. Now, if you have a long enough coil, mine's a little cracky, so I don't know if it's gonna do this for me. But if you have a long enough coil, you might be able to get all the way up and around your piece with one coil. If you have to use littler pieces of coil, you just gotta plan out ahead how much extra coils you're gonna need. And you can see I've got a little extra over here and over here that I wouldn't need on my piece. So then I would just kind of mark where I wanna cut that off. Again, I'm just using the backside of a fork, nothing fancy. And then I could put that aside and I would just slowly cut into the coil and just cut that extra little bit off there. Just like that. So now it's gonna fit a little better for my piece. I flipped it, there we go. Oh, something like that looks pretty good. 
All right, so now we're gonna go on to attaching the two pieces of clay. And this is similar to what we've done in the past with our last project, the abstract pinch pots. So I'm gonna go ahead and score. So I'm just taking my little fork and kind of digging it into the side of the piece, making little score marks. This is where the slip is gonna sit in between and it allows it to glue together. For coil projects, I do like using a fork because it's a lot quicker than going in just with a little pin tool. So that's that piece. Now I need to do the same thing for my coil. I wanna make sure you can see what I'm doing. I don't wanna change the shape of my coil, so I'm just lightly scraping it across. Just like that. Okay. Now the two pieces are roughed up, so the clay glue has a place to go into. You do see me kind of swooping all the little schnibbly bits aside so they don't stick back onto my piece. I do like to have a nice clean working surface. So at this time I can go ahead and get my flip going. Now if you want to just dive right in here with your finger, that's fine. If you want to get just a simple brush from the dollar store. This was over in the painting section and it came with a set of three, I believe. So I'm just gonna dip into my slip and load that up on my brush, taking it over to my piece. And I'm putting down a fair amount, just working it right into the edges here. Wherever I put those score marks, I know I need clay glue. If I accidentally skip this step, that's when pieces can and will fall off, whether or not it's in the drying process or it happens in the kiln without properly slipping and scoring, it will pop off. Okay, so here I'm just painting that slip right into the next section, given a nice coating. And now I could take my piece back over to the base and I'm just gonna fit it in here. Done like that. And I wanna make sure it comes in contact with the bottom. I'm just pushing the coil so it fits nicely. Now, when you see this little sandwichy mark, in the end, we should not be seeing, especially on the base where the coil and the base come together. So you would have to work this together so you hide that seam as best as possible. Sometimes I just give it a little tap. Okay. There we go. So it's looking better, but I would go in and smooth it out. And if there's a little area still showing up, I might just take my finger and push some slip into that last little crack there and smooth it out till it kind of goes away. And I have to do this with every single piece of clay that I want to add to my vessel. So craftsmanship is very important with your design and it does affect your grade. You wanna take your time and make sure that it's adhered really nice Sometimes I'll still give it just a little squish and make sure that that's on there. This is your first coil going down. So you're gonna take your time. If this comes unattached, that means all the coils that you do above here are gonna pop off too. So really taking your time, having good craftsmanship, keeping your lines sharp. Nothing should be lumpy or bumpy. All right, so that is the first part of your base. Next, you would go through and kind of same process. You're just gonna roll out your clay, measure it, kind of dry fit. Cut off any extra. One of the smart things you could do is if you know you need all the same amount 
length of coils. You could have a whole bunch of coils laid out and just cut them to fit right next to one another. So you get the same measurement going. And you would continue building this up. Our uh, coil base is going to be in the end just about eight to 10 inches tall. So you really got to take your time. And again, when we get back to the school, we will be able to use the extruder so it'll go a lot quicker after that. Now this piece that I added to the top is not slipped and scored, so it is just popping right off. This piece down here that I properly slipped and scored can actually hold the rest of the design and it's not coming off. And that's really what you want. When you're done working on your piece, at the end of class time, you do want to wrap this all the way up in just a grocery store baggie so no air is coming in contact with the piece. And that way the next day you can go back to it and be working on it. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. But this is the basics for starting your piece. Let me know if you have any questions.